talk about a football fan and they think of the Buffalo Bills, some people will say losers, four Super Bowls lost them. Other people will say resiliency. You're a native of Buffalo. How do you feel about them? Being a uh, Buffalo Bills fan really isn't being a fan. It's a way of life. Last year, I went, it was, uh, Ralph Wilson asked me to go back to Buffalo and talked at the community luncheon, which opens the season. And all the players are there. And I said, when you go out on that field, I know you're playing for your pride. I know you're playing for your career. But you're also playing for this life called Buffalo. This life that it represents people who honestly believe that against all the odds, against some of the worst weather imaginable, they have a magnificent life that they're proud of. Would you rather be than right here? Bills game. Like that. That's the whole game is that. You're you're just going and then you jump up. Yeah! You know, yeah! That's watching a football game in Buffalo. But they do it, and girls do it. Isn't that nice? How nice is it a city where you could take a girl to that? She puts the plastic bags on, she puts the batteries in her socks, and you go as a couple. The most beautiful thing that you can do is go and freeze to death and watch a Bills game. It was a great deal of joy playing for a town that was filled with a lot of blue-collar workers. We were out there busting our butts, doing everything we possibly could to bring a championship to that particular area. The Bills are worshipped in Buffalo, but perhaps no fan is more devoted to the cause than Jan Gallo, Vincent's mother. In Buffalo, we love Jim Kelly! In Vincent Gallo's movie, Buffalo 66, Angelica Houston portrays Jan Gallo. Matching Mrs. Gallo's devotion to the Bills may have been the greatest challenge of Houston's distinguished career. New York. 30 years I haven't missed a game. I haven't won a championship since 1966. And I missed that game because that's the day I had Billy. Oh. I wish I never had him. I don't miss that game. My real mother is much more that character than in the film. She's absurd. The house is a shrine to the Bills. I always tell the kids they could never get married during a Bills game because their mother would never come. <laughs> I certainly never got the attention that the Bills did in our family. I missed a game in 84. My husband had an open heart surgery. So I had no choice. He had a heart attack. <laughs> Hopefully. He wasn't watching this game in the 1999 playoffs. Neal, and he, he throws a lateral, and down the sideline, only Christie down there to stop the play, and they're going all the way with it. It's Dyson going for the touchdown. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. This is insanity. Yeah. You look back at that football game, you shake your head and say, boy, when are the Buffalo Bills going to get out from this snake-bitten dark cloud that just sort of hangs around them? They can get so close. And then all of a sudden, somebody snatches something away from them. A lot of people feel that there's this mass conspiracy to keep this town from winning a championship. Kelly's going to throw. Here's Kelly. You know that that's false. It makes no sense. I've heard them. I mean, I've heard people share these theories. It, it, it's like everybody's Oliver Stone around here. Further contributing to the conspiracy theories and confusion is the recent history of O.J. Simpson. He may be the greatest Buffalo Bill ever, but rarely is he thought of as a football player anymore. It was a blow, and it left people feeling pretty empty and, and, and I think, uh, betrayed. Not our O.J., not the man who had brought so much excitement. It was eerie for my son and I to go to the Hall of Fame last year in Canton and walk through these bronze monuments to Vince Lombardi and Bart Starr and men of character and dignity, and then you get to O.J. Simpson and you stop. I didn't think about 92-yard runs. I thought about the crime. It really does alter your whole perspective and puts things into a focus that is very uncomfortable. When you look back at all the things that have happened to the Bills, do you think that this is a team that, and this sounds like a cliche, that's cursed? We're blessed. It's You're blessed? Guy. Yeah. Yeah, we're blessed. If you walk through the streets of Buffalo, it's the Irish neighborhood, the Italian neighborhood, the Polish neighborhood, the black neighborhood, the Hispanic neighborhood. Everyone comes together on a Sunday. It's a common bond.
we lose, we hate it, <clears throat> we take it personally, we feel the rejection. Those Super Bowls, oh, God. Whenever the Bills would play uh, Dallas, I'd say, Dallas doesn't need this. They have big oil and big blonde hairdos <laughs> and big skyscrapers. They have their own identity, and they play the Redskins. Washington doesn't need this. You have the White House and the Pentagon and the Congress. Buffalo. We have the Bills. That's who we are. We, sometimes we feel inferior, inferiority complex, but in the end, we know that also being a Buffalonian means getting up, dusting yourself off, and going back in. That's kind of the American way. A lot of times you get knocked right to your knees. And the people that are, that are made of something, and that's what our countries were made of, they get right back up and get right back at it. And I think that transcends into people's life each and every day. Someday our ultimate goal is going to be reached because our perseverance is there. We will never, ever stop trying to win this thing. If there's one play that symbolizes Buffalo spirit, it's this one by Don Beebe, who lost four Super Bowls with the Bills before finally winning one with the Packers. Five's a charm. I'm going to wear that ring this time. I'm standing behind Brett about 10, 12 yards, and he kneels down and it's finally over. I walked up to Brett and I said, Brett, you know, can I have that ball? He turned and looked at me, gave me the ball, he says, man, he says, you deserve it. In winning that game, I was really, I was winning it, not just for myself, not just for my family, but winning it for all of Western New York, the Buffalo Bill players, organization, and fans. All people wanted in Buffalo was just one, just once to say, yes, our time has come. It's so magical, I can't tell you. One day, it's gonna happen. The Bills are gonna win the damn Super Bowl. I'm telling you, we're gonna get it. You know, I hope it happens for my poor mother soon because her life she's just been waiting it's as if she's been she's like a spinster who's been waiting to get married or something you know it's she's just it's painful it's so painful for her i think the greatest story for for the league for this country is the bills winning a championship because i don't know where a championship could be appreciated more celebrated more i mean i I think about what a Super Bowl parade would be like in Buffalo in the middle of January with the weather likely unpleasant, and you would know it. I think there'd be, you know, all these uh, uh, people without shirts on, men, maybe some women too, I don't know, dancing in the streets and celebrating, and the heat of the celebration would probably melt whatever snow or ice was in the city. They'd go crazy. Go crazy. Buffalo, they'll win us someday. You know, they're, they're not cursed. It would be the brass ring, ecstasy. The one thing that, you know, everybody would say, well, now, now I'm ready to leave the earth even. You know, the Bills have finally won a Super Bowl. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be there, and it's gonna feel good, and, uh, and I'm never gonna feel like a loser again. For more on the Buffalo Bills, log on to NFL.com.